Hello friends, in this video we will be looking into DX versus FX cameras. What does the term DX mean? What does the term FX mean? What are the differences? So let's look into that today. So FX camera versus a DX camera. What exactly changes and why you want FX camera in some situations versus a DX camera. So first of all, let us try to understand what does that even mean, FX versus DX. So DX and FX refers to the sensor size. And basically what that means is your sensor side inside the camera changes in both FX and DX cameras. Now FX cameras are known to be the full frame cameras. What that means is the sensor size in an FX camera is a full size sensor. So the size of the sensor on an FX camera is 36 mm by 24 mm. And this is equivalent to a film size of a 35 mm. Now when you go to a DX camera, what happens is the DX camera has a similar sensor but it is smaller, it's a crop sensor. And because of the crop sensor, the size of the sensor is smaller. In this case, it is 24 mm by 16 mm. So if I compare an FX camera to a DX camera, uh, you can easily see the size of the cameras and, and you can easily see that the FX camera is much more bigger than a DX camera. One of the reason is because of that big sensor. Because it needs to house that big sensor inside, um, the, the bodies are much more bulkier. So that definitely is one of the disadvantages that FX camera is heavier, it's bulkier. One more thing to consider is the lenses for FX cameras and DX cameras are different too. The most of the times the lens itself will tell you whether it's made for a DX camera or whether it's made for a FX camera. Now, can you interchange them and can you still still make it work? In most cases, yes. You can take a FX lens and fit it on a DX camera and it will still work. That because there is a crop sensor in a DX camera and if you're using a FX lens, so the camera itself will apply a 1.5 crop factor to it and what the, the image that you will get will be smaller. On the other hand, most of the times if you try to use a DX lens on an FX camera, it won't work. So when you're selecting the camera or when you're moving from DX to FX, it's always preferable that you change the lenses as well so that you get the best quality so again these lenses are expensive the cameras are expensive so choose wisely if you are seriously considering photography and, and you know at some point you will be moving from DX to FX I would recommend that don't spend too much money on DX lenses and then once you upgrade it to FX camera and then at that point you want to spend more money get good lenses that suit your camera the other factor to consider is the cost um, if you are looking for something as a hobby and you don't want to get into it professionally, maybe a DX camera is good enough for you because those are slightly cheaper than FX cameras. Same with the lens, that FX lenses are much more expensive. Uh, but definitely money is a big factor and uh, FX cameras and lenses both are expensive compared to a DX camera. So one of the reasons why people move from DX cameras to FX cameras is there are some advantages of having a bigger sensor. These bigger sensors have better sensitivity, meaning you can capture much more light. So typically the ISO values on these cameras, FX cameras, will be much more higher. So if you are into low light photography or even if you are into some event photography, that could be a big benefit that you can even shoot at higher ISOs, ISOs like 4000, 5000 and you will hardly see any noise in the pictures versus with DX cameras there is a limit to it and if your sensor is a smaller sensor then a higher ISO means more noise so definitely you are affecting the quality of the picture. The other thing is if you are into landscape photography or if you are into low light photography specifically then in those conditions as well there is a chance that you need that higher ISO uh, for example, if you are taking the star trails or if you are trying to take pictures of Milky Way, uh, you definitely need much more higher ISOs. I have tried those pictures with both DX cameras and FX cameras and trust me, DX cameras don't do the job. You need a FX camera that can go to higher ISO and still give you a good picture with minimum noise. One more thing that changes from DX to FX is the dynamic range of the sensor. What dynamic range means is the ability of the camera to see the colors and if you can see the colors better, obviously you can capture them better. So that again is a good reason why people move from DX to FX. So these are some advantages, disadvantages of DX versus FX. At the end, it's all about the, the sensor size 
and as long as maybe DX works for you that might be the way to go. I used to use a DX camera before for most of my professional photography which is events even for my landscape photography but definitely moving from a DX camera to a FX camera I see that shift and I'm much more comfortable now with the FX camera. Um, so once you get into using FX cameras and FX lenses, you don't want to switch back to DX cameras. Even though with, with current DX cameras, you can get good megapixels out of them. Still, I feel there is a limit to it and FX cameras definitely are the way to go if you're looking into professional photography. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, please comment and let me know. Thank you for watching.